think and it is good thing is if there is any changes uh, uh, getting done in the future by the author you will be still getting a track because it is published in github okay so that's what <coughs> so you can give, go here and uh, before we walk through uh, certain things we uh, kind of understand as the library has the library has various helper apis you can see there uh, the author of this uh, sample source code has listed down uh, this uh, quick uh, comment or quick documentation uh, what that api is doing so that anybody who goes through the code can understand and again if you want more elaborate uh, elaborate you know description and details of course you go to the website and go through the actual api uh, you know documentation you can see there just one api they have put lot of documentation written values and exceptions and you know things like that so go through uh, this uh, they have also published both text and uh, html version okay in fact i was referring something and then i felt uh, encouraged to, to shoot this video because i never posted about uh, you know lippy cap and uh, the thing is personally i am not a big fan of uh, using any library as i mentioned in the beginning so go to the source code uh, again i am not an expert some extent i quickly walk through and we go, uh, try to jump on to the most important areas where we actually use this framework and try to get something out of it okay please note this day to day basis i always do but i uh, i do in uh, directly in the kernel space since it is done in the kernel space i just need to manipulate skb data structure and i don't need to use any third party libraries because it is the actual original packet data structure it is held in the linux kernel but in the case of lippy cap the packet is coming to the user space with this lippy cap library with the help of this lippy cap library and the library has its own packet data structure okay so that's what so be aware of this okay so when you do in the kernel it's a very fundamental raw access of it with the help of the whole huge data structure like skb and even the ports like net device data structure but in this it is all abstracted within this lippy cap library so understand this differences and again if you use raw sockets you don't have any such guidance okay so let me open that uh, raw socket uh yeah you can see there so this is what i was telling you i've done various uh, video episodes these are uh, done long ago so go through that you can see uh, i've done uh, i did the various uh, samples uh, like uh, you know direct udp packets and direct uh, uh, slow protocol uh, like stp and uh, stuff like that in this case it's a zip packet so it is on top of udp and in this case it is stp it's a l2 multicast or switch switch switching slow protocols okay and in this case it is ospf it is somewhat different when it comes to ospf so you can see various examples with various uh, types of arrangement of you know network uh, headers okay so here you can see it's a very fundamental access there is no you know uh, weird apis and nothing like that when it comes to lippy cap again this i'm saying if they are uh, if you are very new to this and try to get the full complete picture that's the whole intent of this video otherwise you can anyway do in google search and then find some you know directly sample code then why do you need a guru okay so the guru's aspect is to give the actual big picture and set a proper goal so that you can next to do is self exploration okay so i want to assist in this process okay like i do also in my paid sessions with my students okay so you can see there it's a very very fundamental access you do this you do the socket and it is raw socket access and then you use that uh, you know data structure and then you do if you don't uh, use any ip uh, header existing data structure still you can hard code you can just create a byte array like this you can see there okay and then you can pump it out same way you can receive you can scan uh, you can uh, uh, how to say you can uh, parse it and then you can extract it you know stuff so this is what happens but in the case of lippy cap we jump on to this source code and if you see the source code 
you have all these uh, dependence uh, which are included okay header files and then this is the main callback so pay attention 90% of your time on this callback uh, this is the place where the packet is coming and as i said in the kernel space you have the packet data structure is uh, skbuf okay in the case of p you know lippy cap it is pcap packet header okay so this is the packet data structure i request if you are uh, uh, i mean if you have some serious dependency and you were interested to do some serious uh, network stack in user space with lippy cap just spend lot of time go through this data structure as well okay internally what it has and stuff similarly in the case of you know kernel obviously you can do sk underscore buff you get that sk buff and i have again short various video episodes you can go through various uh, sample apis and uh, you know uh, things in the skb so you can see there it's a it's a very large data structure you can see there it goes on and on and on and on and after it gets complete you get all this helper uh, apis to access that i mean which depends that data structure okay so you can see there so this is what it is so go through this data structure when you get to a stage that you need to harness this lippy cap and you need to write some serious applications out of it there's also another thing i suggest is when you type this uh, lippy cap and uh, you go to this images uh, you can find the somewhat like architecture overview of that uh, you know stack you can see there uh, let me pick a good example yeah you can see there network drivers it is in the kernel space and then lippy cap again there are actually good architectural diagrams you can find not this one uh driver kernel space user space not this one long ago there was one uh, popular uh, picture used to come when you type uh, lippy cap i'm just uh, searching for the same yeah this uh, tells the overall architecture of the this thing but not the context uh, connecting the kernel and user space stuff not sure uh, if i find uh, post uh, editing this video or uh, you know after publishing if i find anything interesting i can add it in the video description okay so something like this you can see that lippy cap it's a library and it is above this and the capture socket and then it is above this abstracting our uh, direct raw access to this you know kernel space stuff okay so that's what it is but again i'm not sure uh, that old picture i'm unable to get it uh this uh, fundamentally tells the packet processing but not lippy cap yeah anyway we proceed uh, with this yeah kernel level np cap something something and uh, i'm not sure anyway let me see if i get something very much relevant and uh, also it is uh, uh, depicting the actual lippy cap architecture then i can add in this video description so we go back to this Uh, source code block uh, we go back to this so this is the actual callback where when the packet arrives this callback is called and here is where you can add any code of your choice you can uh, in this the author have added a simple sniffer type of a code uh, which you can segregate what is the type of packet is it tcp udp icmp and stuff so that's what is trying to do so before that Uh, this is the main code which actually registers this device and stuff so you can see there uh, this is the main supporting uh, uh, code so we come down here what he is trying to say is pcap lookup dev and this picks a default interface which is active interface okay although i don't recommend this approach uh, this literally is taking say for instance in my system i have these ports currently this port is what active interface and it is picking up this uh, wireless ethernet port so it is the default interface so it is picking up this as the interface 
but we should have a way to force that interface to be anything else not just default interface so i am searching what is the api to select our custom interface not that you know default one okay so in this case it is taking default one so if you have or if we have an option we should ideally get that uh, uh, you can uh, do a scan of and then get from the user which interface you want you can type eth0 eth1 or localhost anything like that and then it will uh, you know do this lookup you know sort of a thing so that's what you know you can actually do the change if you want it not this way but on a specific interface so in this case he's doing that if it is not existing uh, written this error and coming out of the code if not he is printing this and then he is also doing this uh, lookup network and from that he is getting the network interface this uh, you can see there this is also very interesting you can uh, write any C uh, network application so like I do often uh, for my you know uh, projects uh, uh, sometimes I do directly scan uh, <laughs> the output of if, if config and then I do the set doc and all such commands uh, and then I extract its IP address but you can actually do much better way is through this you know library you can see there you can do that and then get the network parameters and then you can see their source address uh, I mean sorry address IP address net mask and stuff like that we are extracting from this uh, data structures and then as a sample we are printing it on the screen so you can see there and then actual the actual uh, you know capture thing so here uh, pcap open live and we can mention it is in promiscuous mode or non promiscuous mode uh, if you are not aware promiscuous mode allows you to capture all the packets hitting in that e ethernet interface it's a very much an hardware option you can turn on here and it in turns the driver turns on in the you know nikad okay so i have again taken exclusive you know videos about promiscuous mode it's a very very serious thing uh, if you are very advanced you know network developer uh, sometimes it gives you a lot of powers actually so hence we can tell it is promiscuous mode non promiscuous mode usually if you open wireguard uh, i'm sorry wireshark it captures in promiscuous mode momentarily and it will uh, disable okay so hence even here you can enable that option and it does uh, if you don't want to do with this of course you can do with if config command as well generally you can turn on uh, the promiscuous mode you can see it is not enabled but if you want you can do if config provide that interface and you can type as promise and then you can also run this code as non promise most probably it should work okay so anyway i'm not doing it if you do this this promise cut status will be displayed here uh, i'm maybe i can do for this interface this is my wired usb to uh, wired ethernet okay so let me do for this yeah uh, since uh, yeah the interface is not up it is not allowing uh, perhaps i can do is so you can see if config uh, the port should come up yeah you can see the port has come up okay we got in uh, valid ipv4 address so now we can try this uh, option mm, yeah i'm sorry this is a typo let me remove this and promise sudo so maybe even the router start is not needed anyway you can see there you do this if config and you can see the promise option so that's what it is so once you open promiscus it will allow all the packets even uh, non unicast packets uh, ipv4 packets should come to this interface and come inside the linux kernel uh, so that we can access those packets as well so hence you can see there uh, we can select that and in this code the author has given this hash defined uh, parameters so you can uh, use 0 or 1 and then you can start this capture and after that there is this compile option uh, in the compile option i think he is uh, defining what type of packet he wants and stuff again this is something i recommend you to uh, go through this uh, you know uh, uh, api uh, documentation you can see there pcap compile and then you have this and you can see some examples of it okay what options it takes and stuff so you can see there okay so this you can also find various other 
cases how others are using it okay so you can see there recap compile yeah for various filter options so in this case he is setting this uh, tcp and then again uh, set filter role by compilation i am not sure about this okay so let's just get to the main thing we are finally registering our callback of course you can keep any name of this api we are registering this callback as soon as the packet comes uh, which uh, gets that criteria you know capture that packet so that's what we do pick up loop and hope you can see and one more thing is you can also mention how many you want etc so again go to this documentation pick up pick up loop uh, you should find here okay html and you can see how many packets and uh, stuff yeah count you can see there the count is mentioned so you want to just two packets three packets then you can mention uh, the count as well and uh, limit your sample okay so that way you see uh, the packets do come here and uh, this is the callback so whatever is in the callback we just need to retain it and this is the data structure so in this data structure we are getting the raw layer 2 header onwards okay it's just not ipv4 onwards it's raw layer 2 header onwards and we can see here we can extract ethernet header with this and then we have this ethernet header in this standard data structure and then you can do anything out of it you want to print mac address anything you can do that and in fact as an example ethernet header uh, we have this in this example is not printing one thing i'll do is we just do a quick uh, compile and uh, run you can see before shooting this episode i was just doing that quick trial as i said uh, you can compile like this and make sure to provide this minus lp cap option okay so that uh, the library is included and you don't get any runtime errors so if you don't include you get this error okay so minus lp cap it is compiled and then you can run it 